Hey, so a while ago I made a video about a brushless motor driver I got off of Amazon for about 20 bucks. And I used it to control a hoverboard motor. So the manufacturer has updated the board and released the new version and it's got some changes. So I figured I'd make a new video to show you how it works and uh, what's new. So let's take a look at it. So this is the board on Amazon. It's uh, made by a company called Rio Rand. It's a 400 watt, 6 to 60 volts PWM DC brushless electric motor speed controller with hall sensors. It's about $19 USD. Uh, it's a nice little board. It works pretty well. It comes with this little cable for your hall sensors, but you'll, you'll need a solder to make connection to them. They also make another version of the board that uh, is hallless, so uh, you don't need to connect the hall sensors. I have not tested this version, so I'm not sure how well it works with the hoverboard motors, but uh, it's about a similar price, uh, $18 USD on Amazon. It probably works pretty well. Um, maybe someday I'll snag one and test it out and see how it works. Here's the two versions of the board side by side. The one on the left here is the old version and the one on the right is the new version. An easy way to determine what version you have is the old version has one large capacitor where the new version has two uh, slightly smaller capacitors. They have changed some stuff in the design. They changed the pinout of this connector right here. On the old version, they had one of these pins, had the analog input and the pulse width modulator input combined into one. And they had this jumper here that you could remove if you wanted to use that pin to control the board. On this new version, they still have the analog control here, but they move that jumper right here and they don't populate it. And the pulse width modulator control is now on one of these auxiliary pins right down here. They also moved the speed controller from right here to that ex one of the auxiliary pins. Here's the pinout of the board. On this left terminal connector over here, you've got your motor phase connections. You've got a power supply input, uh, 6 to 60 volts DC. I usually use a battery out of a hoverboard, which is uh, 36 volts. On this right connection over here, you've got a 5 volt output. You've got an analog control signal that you can put 0 to 5 volts in, and that'll control the speed of the motor. A ground connection, direction pin. Uh, this is active low, so if you ground this pin or put a low signal on this, it'll be one direction. If you leave it floating, the motor will spin the other direction. A brake. Now, this is active high, so you'll want to put a uh, high signal on here or a 5 volt so you can put like from this 5 volt signal through a switch over here to the brake and when there's a high on this then it applies the brake and it'll stop the motor and this is a stop this is kinda like an enable so if you put a low signal or a ground on this it basically disables the drive so the motor will coast to a stop uh, this connector is for your hall sensors A, B, and C with a 5 volts and a ground and then this uh, these pins right down here is your auxiliary port. You've got your ground, this is a speed output, another 5 volt output, uh, pulse width modulator control, and another ground. Now if you want to use this pulse width modulator to control the board, you have to jumper the PWM jumper right here. You can do that with a little solder blob or a little jumper wire. Unfortunately with this new board you the manufacturer is requiring you to solder something into here to to use the PWM signal. So up here you've got your speed control potentiometer so you can adjust this to control the speed of the motor. I mostly just use this for uh, testing to make sure everything's working right but when you're if you're using the analog control line or the PWM input this needs to be adjusted to the minimum so it doesn't interfere with your other signals. So here's an image from my test platform it's built on a hoverboard chassis, kind of half of it, on top of some uh, 2x6 blocks to raise the motor up. Uh, this is the hoverboard motor, the motor wires come up through here, here's the motor phases, they go through these bullet connectors, the hall sensors loop around here and get connected into here. Uh, this is my hoverboard battery, uh, 36 volt, 158 watt. Um, it's connected through here. And then down here, I've got all my switches connected. I've got a stop switch, which is kind of like the enable, the brake switch, and the direction switch. I've also got an external power benchtop power supply connected through here, through these cables. So here's my test platform. 
so I can adjust this potentiometer to get the motor to turn so that's probably about as slow as it'll go and then I can adjust the potentiometer up higher and there's maximum speed from there uh, this is the stop switch kind of the enable so I flip that switch and the motor kind of coast to a stop now I can still spin it fairly freely and I turn that switch off and the motor runs again so now this switch is the brake so when I switch it the motor comes to a, an abrupt stop and it's got quite a bit of resistance so I can still turn it but I can't spin it like I could with the stop. And I disengage the brake and it spins again and then this is the direction. Now you probably shouldn't switch it switch to the direction when the motor's running this fast but I'll do it to show you that it does work. Kinda violent. So really what you should do when you're changing direction is apply the brake, change the direction and then disengage the brake. Now slow it down there at a slower speed you can change the direction it doesn't seem to affect anything so it doesn't have any problem changing directions at slower speeds now I've hooked up my benchtop power supply I've got the positive terminal of power supply connected to the analog control line and the negative terminal connected to ground an alternative to this is you could use an external potentiometer connected between the 5 volts and the ground with the wiper connected to the analog control line. So I'm going to adjust my power supply up at 0.01 volts until we get the motor to spin. There's five. I'm starting to turn at five, six, seven. Seven's kind of where it really starts to turn. And then go up higher. Uh, let's go by 0.1 increments. So we increase the voltage, the motor spins faster. So there's one volt. Two volts. There's three. Four. And there's five volts. Probably shouldn't go much up much higher than five volts. And then uh Switches still work, that's the stop and the brake. And we can bring it back down. So that's how the analog control signal works. So now I've got my Sele logic analyzer connected up. I've got the ground connected to the ground on the auxiliary port. I've got channel 0 connected to the speed output and I've got channels 1, 2, and 3 connected to my hall sensors. So let's bring up the logic analyzer software, hit play, and then we're going to do one revolution of the wheel. Okay, so if we look at this, this top signal right here is the output of your the speed output signal and then you've got your hall sensors A, B, and C down here. So every time one of your hall sensors changes states, you get a state change on your speed output. So I counted up, there's 90 state changes on the speed output. So for one revolution of the wheel, we get 90 uh, state changes. So, so what you can do is you can feed this signal into like an Arduino or uh, other microcontroller, and then you can measure the frequency and you can determine what your speed is based off that frequency. I'll post a link to my blog down below which has formulas for calculating the miles per hour or the kilometers per hour using this signal. So check it out. Alright, so if you want some more information I'm going to post a link to my blog down below which goes over all the stuff that I've shown in this video in a little more detail. Um, and I'm also posting some links, Amazon links, to the board and the Sele logic analyzer and stuff that I use in this video. So check that out and hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe and like and we'll see you later.